Hello, uh, my name is Umar Hadi, Ambassador of Indonesia to the Republic of Korea. We established diplomatic relations uh, around 46 years ago and uh, in 2017 uh, our uh, strategic partnership was elevated to a special strategic partnership uh, during President Moon Jae-in's visit to Indonesia. Uh, in your opinion, Ambassador, what do you think uh, makes us such good partners? The two countries enjoy a lot of uh, similarities mm -hmm. uh, in so many areas. And, you know, right now I can say our two countries want to be closer with each other. And in fact, our two countries need to be closer to one uh, another. Uh, what's not to like? I mean, uh, first of all, uh, Indone both Indonesia and Korea are democracies, working democracies. Uh, and then we both have open market economies. The two countries also respect and protect human rights and uh, a lot of other things. Uh, so this is something very natural, uh, something that um, uh, sh it should be this way. Uh, uh, even it should be elevated to a much higher level. Mm -hmm. Um, and, you know, right now, I think uh, there are a lot of uh, joint initiatives and efforts uh, going on between our two governments, as well as between our two private sectors and also at the people-to-people -people, uh, relations. So, uh, as, as an ambassador, I cannot be happier. Uh, to see the growing uh, closer relationship between our two countries. Mm -hmm. Now, I think in the bigger picture with the ASEAN, um, I think that that partnership is quite special too. Mm -hmm. And uh, as you know, at the end of this year, uh, we will host the Korea ASEAN Special Conference. And um, I think it's the 30th anniversary of uh, dialogue relationships between Korea and ASEAN region. Um, how do you assess that relationship? If we look at the ASEAN region as, as, uh, as a one unit, uh, one geographical unit, I think uh, with the rise of Indonesia as an economic powerhouse, um, you know, Indonesia is the largest economy in ASEAN, mm -hmm. right? Also with the largest population. population. Mm -hmm. So that means the whole region uh, will, uh, will grow uh, very fast. And also the, how do you say, it, in, inter trade. So trade and investment between ASEAN countries is growing very fast. So it is uh, just natural, it is just logical that the ASEAN region offers a lot of opportunities. And I think uh, when President Moon Jae-in announced uh, Korea's new southern policy in Jakarta back in 2017, mm -hmm. November, I think that strikes uh, uh, a lot of sense and um, I think uh, uh, that is a, a, a very uh, strategic as well as tactical move that is very much welcomed by all ASEAN uh, countries. As you know, peace and stability have been uh, key words uh, the past few years. Yes. I think probably since you became ambassador, <laughs> <laughs> a lot has happened. Yes. Um, how do you think things will play out uh, moving forward in terms of uh, peace and stability? 
uh, on the Korean Peninsula and in Asia as a whole? You know, if we look at uh, peace and stability in Southeast Asia or East Asia, uh, people tend to be swayed on the importance or, or yeah, on, on the importance, it is important, of uh, actors from outside of the regions, right? And the relationship between those external actors. Um, and then people tend to overlook the importance of other actors or other relationship. Peace and stability as something that is constantly uh, nurtured actually exists in ASEAN. Peace and stability in ASEAN is not by accident. This is by design. Mm and by uh, constant and rigorous efforts from all uh, stakeholders, not only governments, but also private sectors, uh, uh, NGOs, and so on and so forth. Uh, you need to do that as mm -hmm. a community mm -hmm. of nations, mm -hmm. not as an individual country. It's a, it's a community effort. Uh, I think that that is the message that I want to uh, to make in this in this connection. Mm.